said it too many times. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that in. I ran the music. <laughs> uh, yes, please make me not edit out too many ums and ahs. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Westwood Living Podcast. Tom Lydon here with Sarah Spinello and Katie Collins. And Ryan, how old are you, Ryan? Six. He's going to be a large portion of what we're going to be talking about later. That's it. That's all you're allowed to say. I t- we, we asked you to be quiet. Actually, I may chime in a little bit later with you. But ladies, thank you very much for letting me uh, come to your house, Sarah. First of all, thank you. So, uh, so how are you doing? Just let's set the stage with that. How's life? Great. We're excited to be here and tell our story and share it with all of Westwood. Katie? Same. Couldn't be better. Ditto. I have eight more days left of school. <laughs> By the time this is comes out, I'll probably out, be out, right? Sure. So tell us a little bit about where you work. I work in Needham. I'm a teacher. Um, I've been a teacher for 14, 13 years. So I used to be a third grade teacher and now I teach technology. Excellent. And yes. yeah, the countdown is on. It, oh, it's, it's life been on a for a while. Life in June <laughs> becomes very exciting because you see that light at the end of the tunnel. And then Sarah, tell us a little bit about you. Um, so I am a social worker and I work per diem, mainly at Westwood Youth and Family Services. Fantastic. So when we first got a chance to sit down with each other over at the library, that's your home turf. Yep. <laughs> and I was fascinated by your story and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with the residents of Westwood in the July issue of Westwood Living because it is so unique and it really is a great example of the type of story we like to shine a light on. So I'm just going to lay the stage out for you two to tell the story of, of how you met and how your friendship became your passion, and <laughs> how your passion now has become a commitment to raise some money for a very worthwhile cause. Sure. Yeah. So Katie and I met back in probably 2016. We were both members of the Westwood Young Women's Club. I think, Katie, you were president at the, at time. the time. Maybe. Yeah. You look like presidential material. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Or treasurer. Yeah. Maybe both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and... I specifically remember it. So can I tell? Yeah. Is that all right? Of so course. we were at El Massimo. It was like the new hit place to go because it just recently opened, right? And yeah. we were in the back room. And like I had known Sarah through the women's club, but we were never like close, I would say. And she was pregnant at the time. I had already had my daughter, Willa, and Willa was born at 34 weeks. Um, and we, I was in the antepartum floor for a while at BI and then afterwards she went into the NICU and Sarah could probably Sarah came to me during that meeting basically saying that they were possibly going to have to induce you soon I think or they were going to bring you in to just monitor um, and she was going to be going to the BI as well so she was asking me questions about the antepartum floor and of course I'm trying to be as positive as possible being like it's great you know you're on a floor of 36 other women who are all expecting their babies. No one knows when they're coming. So you have to try to stay as positive as possible. But going into it, it can be a very scary experience not knowing. Um, But that's the first time I remember Sarah and I actually ever talking about this experience that we were both going to be part of. Right. Right. So, yes, it must have been 2019 then because I was pregnant with Jack and it was the spring. But I had met you before but didn't really know you as well. Um, And then a few weeks later, I ended up being admitted to BI at 26 and a half weeks. And my first call was to Katie (laughs) saying, what do I do? I have a toddler at home. I have um, this high-risk baby. I don't know how to fill my time. I'm spending all my days in and out of doctor's appointments. She just kind of became my confidant and helped me through the whole process. I mean, no one could possibly predict that you're going to go through that. So you're thrown into this world of like, "Uh uh-oh, this is something I'm not prepared for. So the fact that a network exists is fascinating to me and I would guess very comforting to you. And I don't know if you helped form the network or you benefited from Project Sweet Peas, which we're going to talk specifically about. But to have that network of support, I would guess, has to be incredibly comforting and critical to getting through that process. Yeah. I mean, it was all brand new for me. I didn't know anyone who had gone through it, but knowing how intense of an experience it can be, it's knowing someone who's also going to be going to that experience, you want to be able to help them yeah. as much as you can. Right. And and I will say there were other moms in Westwood that I knew in my neighborhood and through my circle of friends who also had been, maybe one at BI, one at the Brigham. And once you enter this world, it becomes like this 
kind of unspoken club <laughs> of women who have lived through this and know what to expect and can help you navigate a really challenging situation. I'm going to go, uh, I know my next two questions. The first one is this, what is something that a woman and a family deals with when a baby comes into the world prematurely that you never could have predicted that you both experienced? It's hard to answer. I think for me, just the, the there, I mean, there's so much. You don't really have the ability to hold your child as much, I would say. Would you agree with that? It's. Yeah. I remember when I was on the antepartum for the first time, one of the first weeks, during the first week I was there, they brought me up to the NICU just to show you the size. Like, this is the expected size of your baby right now. So they bring you into the area where, like, there are three-pound babies. And that just in itself is an eye-opener to know that, okay, this is visually what I should be expecting my child to look like when – that's not at all during the entire pregnancy you think this is going to end this way or go this way. Yeah, That's a big one for me. I mean, I think it all comes back to grief and loss, like grief of a full-term pregnancy, mm -hmm. loss of what you think might be a healthy child, uncertainty around the outcomes. Um, I remember looking in the doctor's eyes and saying, like, what is going to happen? And they can't predict, but they also have to be really – honest with you about potential outcomes and knowing that and sitting in that feeling is really a hard place to be. Let's talk about Project Sweet Peas and who started it, what purpose Project Sweet Peas serves, and what people should really know about it. So Project Sweet Peas is a nonprofit that serves um, all of Southern New England. Well, really, they're a national organization, but we are connected with Southern New England. And their goal is to provide support to families who have experienced pregnancy loss and who have had NICU journeys. And they do that in a variety of ways. Um, they deliver little goodie bags around the holidays to kind of show moms and families that they're caring for them, thinking of them. They provide some financial assistance in terms of transportation, housing, gift cards, and they also do um, some groups to support families. And they provide support in the form of memory boxes for families who have lost infants. How did you learn about it? Uh, so when Jack was at the NICU, he was born on July 1st. And the first thing he got from the NICU was this tiny little knit hat that was red, white, and blue for the 4th of July. And it was knit by some of the volunteers at Project Sweet Peas. And throughout his stay, we got different like memory boxes and cards and ways to measure his growth and celebrate milestones. And so I saved them all and had them in a box. Over the years, have seen different events that they've done and have gotten recently connected with them as we were hoping to run the Falmouth Road Race and raise money for their organization. Great. And what's your tie-in with Project Sweet Peas? How did you benefit from the organization, if at all? It, not directly. Not directly. So Sarah, it's, Sarah and I had very um, different NICU stays, I would say. My baby um, Willow was there for a week only. I received... Knit, knitted hats as well but I was told they were knitted by the NICU grandmas that will come in <laughs> so I think a lot of other people also donate to the NICU um, and then foster stay was a little bit short his was four weeks as well so a little bit shorter so our NICU stays were quite different in the types of um, supports that you received well the point is we get to 2023 and this is your jam this is what you want to support, and this is your passion. And tell me about your dedication to raising some funds for Project Sweet Peas through running. Are you both running yourself? We are. Yes. Are you runners? <laughs> we, yes, we are runners. No, uh, Katie and I actually both ran the Boston Marathon. Oh, then you're definitely runners. <laughs> in years past, in past lifetimes. So this is not a stretch. 7.2 miles is not that big a deal when you've done 26.2. No. It's only seven. Give us some credit. It's only seven miles. Okay. Well, I was talking with Chris Hancock the other day who also raises some money through the Falmouth Road Race, and he specifically said 7.2, so maybe you might want to prepare for that extra quarter mile. It's good to know now. <laughs> Look, this is what um, my fourth year, Katie, you've run six maybe? Yeah. Five or, yeah, last year was my fifth, so this would be my sixth. But it snowballs, doesn't it? Because this is not the first time that you've raised money for Project no. Sweet Peas. So how did it start, and where has it evolved to? 
So the first time I ran, actually, I should say the second time I ran Falmouth was in 2019, and I ran for the March of Dimes. So I, which is another non for profit that raises for um, families of the NICU. They um, focus a lot on research and prematurity and making sure that um, families are getting what they need, but more medical research, whereas mm-hmm. Project Sweet Peas is more a direct service to families. So I raised for March of Dimes to help give back to families who have gone through similar experiences. And then after that, Sarah and I ran Falmouth in 2020, but that was the at-home version. Oh, I remember those. Mm -hmm. And during that year, that was the year that um, I also ran for March of Dimes because I I believe the way Falmouth worked that year is if you ran the year before, they allowed you to run again in 2020. I ran for March of Dimes again. But then Sarah also raised for March of Dimes, but kind of using like more of a grassroots form. Right. I think that was the year I didn't get a bib. So I ran and fundraised for the March of Dimes. So then... In 2021, this is our third time raising for March of Dimes. We ran for them. And then finally, last year, in 2022, the March of Dimes did not create a Falmouth road race team. So that's when Sarah and I tried to explore different avenues. And we decided to actually give back directly to BI, both the antepartum floor and the NICU. And we created a team using their um, the Falmouth road race benefactors. And we got five bibs. We had to pay for them. Um, and then we received a donation from a very generous donor, Eat yeah. Cake for Breakfast, which Sarah contacted. They're a lovely bakery in Brewster. Brewster. Yeah. Um, it, the story is actually kind of crazy. They were doing a um, sale last summer selling T-shirts saying, Bands Off Our Buns for the <laughs> National Abortion Fund. And so... I bought one and um, started following them as a bakery and they liked my post and donated to our team. And so in my thank you letter to them, I said, hey, any interest in actually sponsoring our team? And the bakery owner said, absolutely. What do you need? And wrote us a check for $1,700 for all five bibs. Wow. (laughs) Got all the bibs covered. So that's fantastic. So you're in the process of training also raising money. Do you have a goal? We do. Um, Last year, we raised uh, $12,000 for um, our with our team of five. And this year, we're hoping to surpass that. Maybe we can even hit (laughs) (laughs) $12,500. The race is on August 20th. We have a race roster page set up where people can donate to the team. I have that linked here right on this podcast. So you know, as everybody Uh, is filtering through you can go right to the link that i have included in the uh, description of what katie and sarah are trying to accomplish here i'm impressed i I, you can't understand how cool it is for me just to meet new people and learn about their passions and just try to help you know i think it's really cool just to try to help you out and raise awareness of it so if you can do that in a community i think that's the purpose of what we're trying to achieve so i wish you all the best what else do you want to tell me before we wrap it up that is a great question. <laughs> I guess I know, what I will say is um, over the years, as we've done different fundraising methods for all of our Falmouth road races, our biggest takeaway has been the support of the Westwood community is unflappable. Mm. And um, we've had kids come out donating all of their lawn mowing money to us um, at bake sales and Um, People are just extremely generous and know our kids and know our story and their support is invaluable. Well, I appreciate your dedication. That is Katie Collins, Sarah Spinello. And as always, if there's somebody who you think I should talk to to shine light on what they're doing and share their story with more people through the podcast and through the publication, please reach out. T. Leiden at bestversionmedia.com is the email. That's the easiest way to get in touch with me. But until then, we will wrap it up. Do you want to take us to the break here, Rye? You get to say goodbye to everybody, okay? You're allowed to talk now. You did a great job through the whole <laughs> podcast. So say goodbye to everybody, all right? Goodbye. <laughs> Good job,